shine away from the women. It's our day, March 8, a global day celebrating the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. This year's event has the theme, Women in Leadership, Achieving an Equal Future in a COVID-19 World, and it's hashtagged, Choose to Change. Mrs. Fire Williams, the managing consultant at Simply Exponential Consult Limited, joins us now. Thank you very much, ma'am, for joining us on the program. Good morning and good to see you. Good morning, Chimeze. It's good to be here again. Happy International Women's Day to all listeners all over the world. We wish you the same here. Well, this year's International Women's Day is like no other as countries and communities start to slowly recover from a devastating pandemic. There is the ch chance to finally end the exclusion and marginalization of women and girls, but do that according to the United Nations. We need immediate action. Women must have the opportunity to play a full role in shaping the pivotal decisions being made right now as countries respond and recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, you have been at the forefront of female emancipation and leadership. How do you feel about today and how would you want Nigerian women and girls to feel about the pursuit for gender empowerment and inclusivity in modern day Nigeria? As we celebrate the IWD 2021 today with our own Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwela as DG um, World Trade Organization and Kamala Harris as the first woman vice president of the most powerful country in the world, you know, the first African-American to take on that role. I feel hopeful and, you know, confident that as women begin to show their capability and competence, they can indeed be identified into positions where they are able to make decisions that would affect the whole world. I would like to take a good example here uh, Mrs. Toki Mabugunje is the current president of the 132-year-old Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And in the COVID pandemic, she was able to stage the Lagos Trade Fair, a trade fair where you have millions visiting. And not only that, she brought in a new idea of the virtual trade fair, and that is going on into her legacy. So this is a woman who is at the table of decision making and has brought in an innovation that will transcend her tenure into many more to come. Now, CBN has also regulated, you know, that there should be a minimum of 30% of females on board of Nigerian commercial banks. But only about 30.7% of banks adhering to this. MSME Development Fund says 60% of loans should be accessible to women. We need to see that laws are not just made, but are actually translated into action, like you have rightly said, um, Chineze. And with the 161 companies quoted on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, um, the SEC has recommended gender consideration for board member selection in public listed companies. But how much is that happening? We have three chairmen who are women, in the four biggest banks, that is hopeful, like I said, but a whole lot more needs to be done and it needs to be backed by legislation. A whole lot more needs to be done. That's why some startling statistics reveal that there are no female CEOs in the 10 most capitalized companies on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Now, we do know that there are now executive directors and chairpersons, but no chief executive in the public sector. There are no female governors, mm -hmm. no president, mm -hmm. no VP in the cultural level. It is a taboo to talk about female traditional rulers. So how do we enhance the struggle for female emancipation from the values of the past and make them change agents for the next generation? Thank you, Chimeze. Just to add a little bit to your statistics, out of four countries selected, Nigeria has the least representation with 11%. Um, Rwanda has 65%. We all know that that is a shining star in Africa. We have um, South Africa with 50%, Ethiopia another 50 and Sudan has 28%. So where are we exactly? And if you look at the House of Rep, the Senate, you know, 
But the figures are, are quite alarming. About 11% in House of Rep, about 7 8% in the Senate. It is worrisome. So firstly, we need a mindset shift from the you know, past orientation, this girl child, boy child, women are supposed to be in the kitchen kind of cultural mentality. We need um, our parents now to give them equal opportunity. And I tell you, men need those life skills as well. So cooking, cleaning, it's a life skill. And it should be acquired by both um, the male and the female gender. You know, so it's now time to fight and confront this gender stereotyping and increase public awareness on why women should be given a seat at the table. They bring a whole different view to development and they must be included. Well, aside from the issue of, um, you know, a lot of men and a lot of um, in cultural, you know, certain thinking that the kitchen is the place for the women. Now, mm. Nigeria has been battling the issue of insecurity, particularly kidnapping. And um, there is this view that um, more of the children that have been kidnapped in schools are girls. Some even fear that this might be a disincentive for sending daughters to school. What do you think must be done to counter this notion and keep the momentum of girl education steady at this time of global competitiveness? We need to empower parents in rural areas and educate them on the benefits of girl-child education and empowerment. The government also needs to provide a safe space for the girl-child. I'll take off my management consultant cap now and put on my safety professional cap. The minimum that every child requires, even under the Child Rights Act, is safety. And the era of having boarding houses without uh, perimeter fencing, without guards, is just not on anymore. And um, I would like us to say a prayer for, you know, the Zampara, Jengebe, you know, girls who were just returned. They must have been traumatized. We had the Dachi girls before them, the Chibok girls before them. Some are still missing. Leria Sharibu is still in, you know, in, 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 um, in, in, in some kind of detention somewhere. So we need to continually educate parents, tell them that in spite of these challenges, the female child needs financial empowerment, educational empowerment, and emotional empowerment. So I will call out these three basic needs of the girl child and encourage parents not to drop the idea of the girl child education because that is a way to have a, a seat at the table and to be able to participate in the future of work, which is with us already. Well, very interesting. You talked about empowering the parents because that's actually where it starts from. But the journey to female empowerment has been tough. And there are some successes, though, worth noting. Like you mentioned at the beginning, you said uh, we, we have Christian Jagad, we have okay. Janet Yellen, we have, of course, the latest Dr. Okonje Weala. But every struggle has its fundamental weaknesses, the complacency of its champions and followers. What do you think that women in general and in Nigeria in particular should do to guard against complacency and potential failure in this major struggle of getting female recognition and equality. Thank you, Chimeze. You know, it's interesting you mentioned Janet Yellen because, you know, she's taking that space of the uh, Secretary of State for the Treasury. And I remember, if I remember correctly, you know, Alan Greenspan or so used to occupy that position. And they said, when Alan sneezes, the whole of America catches cold. So now you have a woman in that position, which is really, really formidable and very encouraging. Now, what we need to do and what we need to realize is that the women groups, they are not sitting down twiddling their thumbs. You know, you have women groups like NECA's Network of Entrepreneurial Women. You have We Connect International, Nigeria branch. You have Wimpies, you have Whisker. They are grooming women for board positions. So the women are coming. They are being equipped, you know, on writing the minutes and being able to participate and contribute actively. We also have some movements like uh, Mr. Toye Cole, I think, of... Uh, Sahara Energy, Pastor Itwa, they are calling out the elite 
women. Say you stay at home, you don't vote, you don't participate. The country needs you. And these women, including myself, we're beginning to realize that we don't really have a choice. If we want to participate, you can't do that from the background. You have to be in the free. And I believe that women are beginning to change their attitude to participating in the highest um, decision-making echelons in the society. Now, we need to restructure our educational system to be gender sensitive by removing those textbooks in social studies that says the man is a breadwinner and the woman you know, is a carer. Both men and women should care and both should earn. Even you can earn as a housewife in your pajamas if you wish. You can run an online business. So achieving gender equality requires the elimination of harmful practices about, around women like gender-based violence and it requires more than tokenism, you know. This tokenism is, is, is just not on. We need equal representation in positions of leadership. So we need to start breaking down the barriers. Now let's look at this affirmative action of 35% that the women were you know, um, offered. Under the Good Luck Jonathan administration, we had about 32%. But now, we, under the Buhari government, we have only 11% representation. So recently, there's been a list of 50 powerful women in Nigeria, you know, released by Mr. Femi Additional. You have Abike Dabiri, you have the female ministers, you have um, Sadia Farouk on the list. And we have people that you can see that they take their positions than more than a job. They're passionate. Abike with the diasporians, you know, the way she goes after those stories, gets the uh, people who are trapped, repatriated home. You can see that it is more than a job. So you need to give women more of a chance to prove their method, to show their intuition, their compassion, their empathy, their organizational skills. And then we will have a better economy, I dare say, and a better Nigeria, a more caring society. I agree with you. And women, of course, are more passionate to um, their jobs. But then, what about managing the job and, of course, the home? Work-life balance has been an issue not only for women, but even for men, I tell you. Because men tend to think that maybe because they don't have that caring role, they can overwork. And overwork has never helped anybody. So there must be balance. Now, for women, um, I would like to just tell a short story of Florence Seriki, God bless her soul. She was the founder of Omate. And um, she went to the Taiwanese embassy with a baby and said she wanted to go to Taiwan. And they looked at her and I said, they said, babies don't go to Taiwan. She said, this baby is going to Taiwan. And the baby went ahead with her. She visiting all the trade fairs. She, she needed to. She didn't leave her child behind. And while she was there, in spite of the time difference, she was calling to make sure the children at home had been woken up. They'd gone to school. They were collected at the right time. They had done their homework. So I tell you, women can multitask and they can achieve work-life balance. In my own situation, I had all my children's um, prize giving days, sports days in my diary, just as I have an appointment with, with whichever CEO, you know. So it, both um, kinds of jobs are quite important. You know, the home is important, your work is important, and you achieve balance by juggling time by making sacrifices. I just told you about how Florence Seriki, you know, several hours behind time, you know, she'd wake up and make sure that her home was running smoothly even while she was away on a time when it's trade fair. So women absolutely. can do it. And they have absolutely. to have this time mm -hmm. in area. Yeah, absolutely. When it comes to multitasking, women can do women it. Women are doing it. You of course. are doing it. Yes, I had I my first baby it. while I was in school, mm -hmm. writing my exams. I had my first and baby. And then you have the rest when you are at work. Absolutely. So doing women are doing work. it. <laughs>
Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Williams. By the way, I have my colleague here, Amy <laughs> John McQua. She's presenting with me. You've been calling Chimeze Chimeze. Well, I have a colleague here. Thank Hi, you very Amy. much. Hi, <laughs> Mrs. Williams. This is collateral uh, damage from being <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. We do appreciate your time. Thank you so much thank for you. coming. Okay, in the world of COVID-19, technology is way too important for women to be excluded from its development and use. And so this day also celebrates tech women and innovation. Mercy George Ibafe, a digital marketing strategist and CEO Lentor, joins us next.